Okay, we're going to now have two talks about Samba back to back. Um, the first by one of the Samba core developers, um, Andrew Bartlett. So I, um, I've been talking many, many years about Samba at the at the scale of 100,000 user enterprise. Um, Certainly a scale much larger than I ever expected to be Samba AD to be, be seen at, but we really are making some good progress. So I'm wondering, are we there yet? This is the team that I work with at Catalyst. Uh, Catalyst has um, really supported this effort really well, and um, we've got um, five Samba team members now at Catalyst, and I've got a team of eight, including Alessandra, my PM. Uh, so um, we work out of Wellington, um, and um, most of the work I'm talking about here is, um, is stuff that we've actually uh, spearheaded um, as part of the Samba team. Um, first, I want to talk about some of our other achievements. Um, I could talk a whole um, slide deck on, on moving to GitLab, but I've just got one slide on this. So we've managed to move some of the Samba project to GitLab. Um, we had tried to use GitHub as a way of improving contributor engagement. We hoped it would um, maybe have sysadmins or um, our other users step up a little bit to doing a bit of uh, working with Samba, but uh, it turned out the Samba team members wouldn't use it, and then it became the platform that people were told to use but got ignored on. So that wasn't very good. So um, GitLab is open core. Um, so we use gitlab.com as a hosted solution for that. Um, we can export the open source version if we want. Um, but we actually have uptake. The Samba team is using it, which um, uh, in particular using it for GitLab CI. So Samba's full test suite is run in parallel on, on the GitLab CI infrastructure. We've um, got gitlab.com provides free CI services, and then the Samba team runs some services um, on Rackspace with a credit that they generously provide. And that CI then allows our developers um, to help us um, produce software faster with better turnarounds unless put your patch in, it failed the test, or you know, go back, try again. Um, and that makes us faster with getting our development, which helps us then spend more of our time trying to move on important things like scale. Um, but we still do all of our final build and merge on Samba Dog hardware. Because we're a project that started in 92, we are still pretty old and conservative about how we do things. Another new thing that we've achieved in the last little while in Samba is moving to Python 3. So Samba 4.10, which is due out in March, will support Python 3 by default. The build system will be Python 3. The Python bindings generated are all Python 3. Uh, the previous versions had partial support. A number of the bindings could be generated, but uh, the whole build system and the complete actual running of an Active Directory domain controller in Python 3 wasn't available. So that's changed. Uh, RHEL 8 will apparently have Python 3 in it if they ever get it out the door, uh, but RHEL 7 only has Python 2. So you sit in this flag day world that I just hate, and Red Hat, um, why did you do this to us? Um, so we'll still be able to build uh, with Python 2.7 for a pure pile server. Uh, we're not going to get rid of that very soon because we know that it's really hard to get mo um, modern software on all these enterprise pieces of equipment that people insist on running modern Samba on. Uh, anyway, it's a requirement, so we are going to keep that going. But the, um, and we're going to have a dual release. The, the next release, Samba 4.10, uh, will still work on Python 2 and Python 3, but we're going to be getting rid of the Python 2 support as soon as I can get some consensus. Um, but here's what I was really here to talk about, which is the goal of having 100,000 users, 120,000 users, 100,000 computers, the whole scale. So we're talking about this, so 300,000 user-like objects in the domain. But also, we're looking for smaller um, scales that people seem to quite casually deploy a same domain on. 50,000 users at an Italian university. When I've heard of this, I thought, you have no idea how badly that would have worked two years ago. But also we're working on other things. Scale and you know, being ready for the 100,000 user enterprise is far more than just does it work with this many users. There are things that matter at that scale. You really need decent audit logging. You really need decent um, auditing of changes at that scale because you're not going to notice them sort of individually. So we've done a number of things. I've talked, this slide has been up for a few years in the, in, as I've given this talk about how we've improved the connection processing in Samba. So we've moved from uh, a number of our components being locked into running in a single process uh, to being um, setting up a forking model, a bit like the old um, Apache forking uh, model. Um, 
which are then also a pre-fork model. Its names are similarly stolen from, from the Apache pros, uh, project uh, for handling our LDAP server. And now we're also managing the um, important net logon server, which is used for um, NTLM authentication, of which there's still too much on many networks, as well as KDC, which is the Kerberos Key Distribution Center. So we're, we're improving the parts of SAMBA that we know are bottlenecks. We're allowing them to run in multiple processes, allows better scaling across the CPUs on the, on the domain controllers. We've also introduced uh, some process limits for the standard um, per connection fork bomb model, uh, try and provide some little uh, bit of control over how well that explodes. I'm moving fairly fast because I've got a lot of slides and there's also a lot of things that we've actually moved through. I would like some questions at the end um, or, or, or as we go though. We've also done audit logging. So as I say, audit logging starts to matter when you're at this scale and we've had people say that the best format for us to ingest those audit logs is not human readable bits of text that then have to be parsed out with the world's most horrible regular expressions, but actually JSON. I got tro we had some, one of our lovely Samba team members troll us on the mailing list and try and say, are we, are we moving to JavaScript? What's all this? No, it's just a really good, well-accepted uh, representation for, for logs. And um, we probably shouldn't have even bothered with the human readable form because no humans were actually reading it. And the JSON actually was, you know, could be, could be actually parsed fairly well. And, you know, we doubled the amount of effort we had to put into the, into the logging. We also have fine-grained password policy, allowing users to have different policies. Previously, there was one policy for the whole domain, and now we can go and say administrators have these policies, or this particular account has a lax password policy, perhaps it's a service account that's not really a service account, things like that, that need, um, you know, maybe you've got a, 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 desk, a, a welcome desk account or something that needs to have a well-known password. So this allows um, us to um, basically work to a larger organization where it's not just one size fits all. Now, um, any of you do backups? Is, is, backups, is backups a part, of, a part of your job? Yeah. Um, so how many of you back up your database instances by just um, tarring the database server? Yeah. So, yeah, not so, not so good. Um, so we did have a shell script which did attempt to lock the database, but as the database is in four files, it locked them one, second, third. And so it was not getting a consistent snapshot. So we're managing to make it take a consistent snapshot of the whole database by locking the whole database and then reading it. We also have an online backup. So now Samba, when it's an Active Directory DC, it has a replication protocol between the domain controllers. So we use that protocol to do the backup. That allows us to um, download the whole database in a form that's less likely to be corrupt because the um, replication protocol by the process of pulling it out of the records and doing it tends to get a nicer view of the database than just raw records. So we have two different ways of backing the database up that allow us to make sure that we uh, uh, get either a sort of sanitized copy or the forensic copy of what was on your disk, which may well be very useful for trying to work out what went really wrong. We also have a restore tool because um, anyone actually restore from backups? So this, um, we do recommend that if you do have a partial Samba domain, that if you want to restore, that you just go and say, okay, turn off the things that are broken, start new domain controllers from the working ones. That's all good. But if you're down to nothing, then we have an authority to restore. It removes all the records to the other domain controllers and says, this is the only DC that has ever existed, and I'm starting from here. This allows you to then rebuild the network without, oh, it's looking for these dead things that were removed but not removed. It makes it much easier to rebuild it in the catastrophic restore scenario. It also makes sure that those other domain controllers that might not have actually been powered off don't suddenly resync into the network and cause total replication chaos. Now, the other thing that's really important if you're going to be working at this scale is to be able to create a lab domain. Now, how many of you are really good, uh, probably Julian can manage it, but anyone else can create a totally isolated level two network that can still get to the, to the mirrors for installing the packages and, you know, and won't talk at all to the rest of your production network? I'm not seeing very many hands. Um, so basically, we had advised customers to do this and they it always just, they merged again and it was a disaster. So what we do is we rename the domain. In the same process of where we restore it and change the important keys so they can't talk, we rename them so they can coexist on the network. This allows you to create a lab domain with all the users from production, possibly the passwords or not, depending on which options you set, but not the uh, name of production. 
So then you can then go and test your things, do your upgrades, and then try it again in production. We've also been working on AD operation at scale. So we've got a traffic replay tool. I've talked about this at a number of conferences in the past. We can pre-create realistic databases. We can uh, simulate to, uh, to get the traffic and even ramp up the traffic based on recording traffic seen on your network and then replaying it. This also allows, uh, is also able to operate against Windows. Uh, so we're actually able to benchmark Samba and Windows with the same traffic load, which is really interesting. Because we're, we're getting there. It's not, not as fast as Windows, but it's, um, it's not too bad. We also managed to get replication working at scale. It turned out that filling the database wasn't enough proof that we could operate at 100,000 users. You couldn't replicate a second replica. So we fixed that. Little things, but basically by, st by actually doing and trying at this scale, we are finding the bottlenecks and finding that they're actually quite fixable. Another issue at scale is into forest trusts. We want to be able to have multiple domains. So this is an area that Stefan Metchmarker has been working on. It's been possible for a little while to, pr to trust other forests. There's still one domain per forest, uh, but these things won't mean terribly much unless you're really versed in AD. But these are the limitations that Samba works with at the moment. But we can actually have decent trust between the forests that handle some group membership crossing them. We're, 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 each step, we make this work a little bit more. Um, We've also got replication diagnostics, because at this kind of scale, you need to be able to know where things are failing with your replication. We've got human readable text. We've got real inspiration from the Ceph project from last year's talk about what um, tools saying how your project is working should look like. And then JSON representation for ingesting into log tools. We've improved Samba tool so that we've got new subcommands for, uh, for organizational unit management, computer management, and, uh, and improve the DNS handling. There's an, um, as we found that the number of group memberships and the distribution of groups, like I have one 10,000 user group, was a really important property for working out the scalability factor of, a, of Samba in a large domain. We now produce a tool that will tell us, in a simple summary, what your domain looks like. Because we were just guessing, and our customers couldn't even tell us sort of what their domain looked like in terms of the shape of that curve. Um, but here comes the, the biggest thing that we've done towards scalability, is we've moved from a 32-bit database to a new 64-bit database. We were concerned that four gigabyte database just would be filled too quickly, they were, or that we'd be spending all the time repacking to get us back under two gig and have enough space for a transaction. So none of our customers wanted to hit the hard limit of four gig and then start development. So we chose the LMDB, it's used by OpenLDAP, and pretty much just did what it said on the tin. It taught us a lot more about our locking than actually problems in LMDB, so we're actually really happy. So we found and fixed a number of locking issues by introducing a new key value layer into Samba. So previously we had the idea of a different back end, but it would take LDAP-like structures. So we ended up adding another layer in there that was key value structures, and then said TDB's key value database, LMDB's key value database, and then put that extra layer in. It actually worked pretty well. With a lot of tests to lock down the semantics, we actually got something which we're pretty ha happy with until we hit locking. Even the prototypes found that we were missing locking. Now, some of this is we fixed quite a while ago. Samba 4.7 is now 18 months old. But we hit more locking. We had issues where we found out we were unlocking databases in the wrong order. And so you could see the sequence number before you could see the data, which then meant that you then told everyone about the new change, the data wasn't visible yet, uh, not good, not good. Anyway, we've um, found and fixed those, um, and then we hit issues around maximum key size. We knew this one was coming. Uh, LMDB has a key size limit of 511 bytes, but we were putting our full distinguished name in. Now, distinguished names, most of them would never be that large, but we know someone's gonna try and stretch the limits. So I re reworked the database to instead use a GUID for the key and then have a separate DN to key lookup. Um, and then we looked at our indexes and said, that's going to be awkward, they're going to be very, very long, but actually, why don't we just truncate them? Usually it'll match, and the rest of the time we'll just scan. It seems to work well enough. We've been measuring performance, actually on an old AMD Athlon, because a um, bit like the Free Software Mirror Group, the way you get hardware at Catalyst is you get the cast-offs. Um, but also traffic replay in the cloud and adding users to groups in my workstation. So we went and ran the traffic replay. Ah, uh, 30% performance loss, oh no. But actually we found that basically we had an interception layer that was meant to be handling network traffic. It also was handling all the right calls to the database. And just looking up the linked list to work out is this a socket that's a network socket was taking time. 
Anyway, maybe about 10% slower. We don't think it's, we think LNDB is scale better, but you know, uh, TDB is actually a darn good database after all these years. Um, we used the traffic replay and that came out about even. And then we went and ran this benchmark, which I've been running for a while, which is just to sort of fill the database. How long, can, how many users can you fill in a, with all the f syncs turned off um, in, oh, 45,000 years, no, that half the, uh, we, we don't need this, what, uh, okay, but F, actually f sync was still turned on. So a few patches later, we, 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 we um, made it also honor the don't f sync. Uh, and we managed to put in uh, 124,000 users in that benchmark sort of run. So it's not really, LMDB is much, much faster than this. But actually what it's really showing us is that the common factor between it, which is the that module stack that sits above all this, that's still where all the slowness is. So you know, going to a lightning fast database underneath doesn't give us you know, 10 times the performance. It just makes things a little bit better. Um, so this is, I've produced this scatter graph just to describe, a, so the lines fan out because they go to one, some of the users are in one, two, and three uh, groups. So, um, but it's interesting, there's a lot higher jumping in the latency with LMDB on the right. We don't really know what that's about. It's presumably rebalancing the tree. It's got a very different database structure the way TDB works. <coughs> so not so bad. We address the customer's need for scale. We set the database limit at six gig at the moment, but that's a compile time constant. We don't have to, it just changes how much virtual memory is being used. People got really freaked out when they saw, you know, 100 gigabyte Samba processors. Um, so I was trying to get the code in. I can change a, a constant later without people screaming. But we open up new opportunities. Uh, we could also start using LNDB sub-databases, which would be still under one giant lock, which is actually what we need, and would avoid our, okay, lock this, lock these, unlock them in the right order kind of game that we currently play. Um, and also, potentially, um, LNDB has a concept of an ordered walk through the, the keys, and that could allow us to do range indexes, which could be really useful. Still some sharp edges. LNDB has different locking behavior. Um, there's no exclusive access. So database operations, um, can't, we can't go and be, put it into maintenance mode, you know, know that we're the only ones in, able to, uh, to access it at all. Files are sparse. Um, it's, I don't really like these, you know, here's a file, the maximum size it's ever going to be, but it's not filled, and so other things filling the disk can then make this really go badly. Um, TDB has always filled its files, and administrators are used to that. So I'm not quite sure how we're going to handle that. Um, I'm not sure whether it will really end up bothering our administrators, but I kind of like DF to represent how much time after we filled the database. Um, they're also not extended automatically, which is, again, different to, to TDB. So just we need some real-world experience from our, from our deployments. There's still stuff to do. Um, full support for 100,000 users is really a task for the, the September release of, of Samba. Uh, we've got to improve subtree renames. I mean, one of our big clients is the French government, and um, in my experience, government organizations love reorganizing, so I'd really like to be able to um, re allow them to do that. Um, we want to change the pack format in the database to avoid reading data that won't be returned, because our current pack format um, is a, you know, you actually end up having to read the whole amount of information about a user in order to actually read anything about the user. Uh, and we're going to improve the memory management so that we um, allocate less memory when we're returning data internally that may not, um, when it's not required to be individually allocated. So are we there yet? Probably. Um, looking forward to the next two Samba releases because we've got, still got a good amount of our project to go with our customers who are paying for this. Uh, but real world feedback would be really valuable. So um, we really appreciate any feedback from any Samba users, um, no matter what the scale is, because it just tells us things, edge cases that we hadn't thought about. Finally, please uh, become an official Conservancy supporter. The Software Freedom Conservancy keeps Samba with a legal home, um, so they are really worth uh, supporting. Um, and um, also, this is Catalyst. These are some of the technologies, and no doubt even more, because my template's old. Um, but uh, in the last 10 seconds that I have, are there any questions? We can take a couple of questions while Karen sets up. 
Hi, just a quick question. Uh, we use CTDB for load balancing. Is this going to be transparent moving over to the new database, or is it? So CDB is unaffected by any of these changes. The, these changes are just across the, um, the Active Directory side of the house. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and, and thankfully doesn't need databases nearly this size. More questions? Were you able to use any of the LLVM sanitizers, um, LSAN and such, to help you with the lock, the locking issues, or just different semantics and you couldn't? Uh, we we just um, we, we diagnosed them with um, mostly just getting back traces on the locks and, and chasing them that way, uh, so get, 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 figuring out which one was locked and then tracing all the processes. There's some good guides on the web about sort of some uh, LS locks and things was very helpful. It tells who was waiting for a blocked lock and things. So that's how we ended up doing it. Time for one more question. Okay, thank you, Andrew.